Hello everyone, Justin here, and today we are going to draw a dice. And let's just go ahead and draw a front edge here. And then another edge here, not not at 90 degrees, but a little bit more than 90 degrees. And from there, we'll go ahead and just draw some parallel lines to make a diamond. And that'll be the top of the dice. We'll just make, go ahead and make that a little bit darker so you can see that a little bit better. And let's draw the front edge at an angle. And again, we're going to go with parallel lines here. We're not going to do much perspective here. It's a small object. You're not really going to see foreshortening so much. Alright, so now let's go ahead and make this side a 3. So let's draw a diagonal. And we'll have the, dot, the dots here then. So if you look at the axis of this surface, it's right here. So the long axis then of the dots, or the short axis then of the dots, will follow this area. So well, let's go ahead and draw our one circle. So if you recall, as you recall, here's the long axis of the oval and here's the short axis. The short axis should follow this direction. Okay, so we'll draw another one here. Here's the long axis of the oval and let's draw that in. Just so it looks kind of believable. And one more. Okay, so up here, let's go ahead and draw, let's put a five up here. So here, the axis then, this follows this line right here. The the axis of this surface follows this line. So it's almost st straight on to this line, but it's it's parallel. All right, so let's go ahead and draw our oval here for the center, center dot. Another one here. Here's our long axis, like let's say right here. So draw our oval, another one here, and one here, and here. Okay, and over here then, we will draw one more dot, and we'll make this a one. Remember that Opposite, opposite faces will add up to 7. So here's 5. We would not put a 2 on this side because the 2 is actually on the opposite side for, of the 5. For the, and we already drew a 3 here, so the 4 would be on the other side. So we definitely don't want to put a 2 or a 4 on this side. So let's go ahead and put a 1. Here's the long axis of this surface. So let's line up the short axis of the, the oval right there. So you may have to experiment when you draw these ovals as far as the degree of the oval that you're going to use. What I mean by, by that is that if you draw the oval like this, kind of big, kind of wide, it's not going to look like it's laying flat on that surface. So you may have to just kind of eyeball that initially and experiment. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make this uh, translucent so we're going to add some shadow and what you can really just try to do is um, look at a reference photo as I'm doing and what's going to happen here is that we're actually going to see a bunch of different reflections so there's going to be a reflection of this oval right here and 
slight reflection right here of another dot. So I'm just going to go ahead and darken this part here. So I'm going to experiment with the shading because there will be different shades here, different values depending on what's being reflected and where. And this is going to be a darker dot. So all of these other dots are going to be actually white. So I'm going to go ahead and just erase our layout lines now. I don't know if I mentioned it, but to find the center of a space such as this, a, a, a square, all you, had, all you need to do is draw diagonals corner to corner and where they intersect would be the center even if the object or shape is in perspective alright so let's continue on and I'm going to go ahead and put another dot right here that's again in shadow so I'm gonna go ahead and darken that So this whole side will be kind of dark and I'll have to vary some of these tones just so there's some definition and show that it's kind of reflective. So just look at your reference picture and try to draw the shadows as well as you can. Obviously if you're just making this as a graph as a graphic dice, you'd be done. All you gotta do is darken the sides around each dot and you're done. But trying to make this a little bit more interesting. So this whole part here will be one tone. So I'll just do that. I'm not going for super realism here either. So I'm out making the outline a little bit darker, which you would not see a line like this on the edges if I was drawing it realistically. All right, so let's go up to the top. And what I'm going to do first this time is I'm going to darken all the dots and I'm going to go ahead and darken all the dark areas first so there's a weird looking shape right here 
then I'm just going to outline it first. And make that really dark. So there's different approaches to doing anything of course. So in this case I'm gonna put in all the really dark black areas first. Then I'll put in the lighter tones afterwards. Which is not the same way I did this side. Here I, as I, I worked my way from one edge of the side to the other. Putting in the dark and the lights at the same time. But sometimes if you go ahead and put in the darks first, you'll get better definition between the different tones. So I'm going to go ahead and darken this pretty dark. Okay, so now there's going to be kind of a somewhat lighter dark tone right here so I'll just go ahead and put something there and I'm not following my reference exactly either taking some liberty and now I'm gonna go ahead and put in our lighter tone everywhere and I will use my other pencil actually which is a firmer lead, it's a 2B. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is add a little bit of a gradient on this part right here. So I'm gonna make the, make it a little bit darker here on this edge and gets lighter as we go across. Okay, maybe add another line right here, a little shadow line. Okay, so these dots aren't flat white paint. They're actually slight depressions, slight depressions. So I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow just on the Say, let's say the light's coming from the upper left. So the right side of these dots, these depressions are actually going to catch a lot of light. So the upper left side then will have some shadow. So I'll just do that just so it doesn't look so flat. Okay, so finally let's do this side. And I'm going to do the same thing with with putting in the dark areas first. And go ahead and outline it just like the others. And you notice that I'm rounding out the corners. All right. So there's a dark spot right up here. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting in my lighter tone all the way around. And there will be a little bit of a gradient here as well, so I'm gonna go from this dark and start getting a little bit lighter so there isn't a clear demarcation between this line dark section and this mid-tone and I'll just go across this face okay so now I'll go ahead and uh, add some more shading just to like right here this is all very monotone very flat so I'm just going to add some shading just to offset that a bit
there's a slight shadow here of a dot getting reflected from maybe another face or actually one of these dots so these edges are I left a little bit wider because usually I just catch a bunch of light and it also helps to show that there's a change in direction here on the surface or of the surface okay having done this side I'm gonna go actually go ahead and make this first dark area from our first side a little bit darker just looking back now it looks a little bit too too light so I'll just go over it and add some darker reflected lines here shadows okay and then I'm just gonna add I'm just gonna erase right here just to make it a little bit lighter so that it's, there's a little bit of a reflection and right there maybe right here and that should pretty much do it that's our dice our translucent dice and just so it doesn't look like it's just floating I'll just go ahead and just indicate a little bit of a shadow cast shadow here thanks a lot for watching and uh, have a great day